Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And in this video, what we're going to do, so in the last video, we set up our schema in Mongoose. But we want to test out actually sending the information into our templates uh, in our application. So we want to put make some dummy data. So if you want to do that, just go to your Mongo Atlas account. Uh, look for your cluster. And you're going to click on here, Collections. And this will show you all the databases inside your um, inside your main database. So I, I have a sub database called GA Projects, and then I created. You can create a collection by clicking over. So click on the database itself, GA Projects, and you can create a collection. You want to make sure you create a collection that matches your schema. So in your blog JS that we made in the last video, your schema was here. Okay, you might I called it blog post. You might have called it something different. Um, but that's what you want to match. So I created I created a collection called blog post, and then in blog post I can insert a document, which means insert a record. Okay, and again in our schema we only define two things: we define title and body. So that's the only thing I put. So I'll make another record. So I'll go insert document, and then again my first thing is title. We'll just call this test post two, and the second thing was body. It's got to be you know type case sensitive, all that stuff. Um, and then the base is key and value. Um, body of test post two. Cool. So now, it's inserting the document. So now my document has, or my collection has two documents in it or two records. Wonderful. Now we actually want to go show that in our code. So again, we have to make sure that our schema is in our index.js, okay? And then again, ignore some of the commented code that I have here. Actually, we can get rid of this. This is just from an experimentation. But we are good now. Uh, okay, so where is my schema? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so again, remember you have to import your uh, schema. So we took it from our blog.js. And we're going to name it blog in this file. Even though we call the blog here, we still have to rename it and assign it to a variable. That's what we're taking from the other file. Cool. And now we can create a route so we can change our index route to bring in that information. So how do we do that? So let's go back to our routes. Do, 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 do. Routes. Okay. So remember, we start off with route.get or whatever you called your router. Route.get. Then this represents the root route. And again, it's always context and next as the two parameters in your arrow function. Now I'm console logging here, saying connected to the root route. It's just that way I know, it's, again, for testing purposes and error finding purposes, that I know that it got that far along in the code. Um, so you can put that there if you want or not. It just allows me when I look in the console to know, oh, okay, it did pick up on the route, it did it did send my request there, um, so that way I know in case there's a problem with the rest of the route and executing the rest of the code, I can kind of identify where it is. Now keep in mind here, okay? So this this is this is what took me a while to figure out and why you saw some commented code that when when we do the code, what you're going to send to the screen has to always start with return. We did that before when we just returned context.render, but we can't just do that anymore because we need the information from the database. So you're going to start off with return because this is going to we're returning to the function to show on the screen, but now instead we're going to continue on with the name of our uh, database object, which in this case is blog. That's what we brought up in our schema. So that so that blog represents that, that hey, we're in the database that we're connected to from that connection code back at the top, we're going to go find this collection, which was blog posts, and we're going to be able to take data and put it in and out from there. What we're going to do is find data in there, so blog.find. Then here, I can put a query. So here I put nothing in this object. So usually, if you're not, if you want everything, you just leave the object as empty. But let's say I only wanted a particular post. So I maybe I wanted um, something with where the title was "Hello World." There isn't, I don't have a post that has a title hello world, but theoretically, this would mean it would only pull a post with the title equals hello world. So I can put my query in there if I want to, and I can query multiple items. I can be like body, whatever, etc. 
okay? We may use it later on to query it. For this, we probably won't be doing using the find function for querying. We'll probably be using find by ID, but we'll come back to that in a later video. Okay, so I'm not looking for anything. So it's going to return me every document in that collection or every record in that table to translate. Now, what this does, it takes another arrow function or another callback. So again, what a callback is, if you're not familiar with the terminology, a callback is when you use a function as a parameter of another function. Okay, so this, so it takes the object as the first parameter and it takes a function as a second parameter. And then we use an arrow function to be able to define a function that doesn't exist yet, which means you put the parameters in these parentheses and then you do the arrow thing and then the brackets. So again, I do a console log here. Again, that's just for test purposes. So that way I know that if this ran fine, if it got to this point, that this is gonna print the results of finding the information from the database onto my console. Cool. And again, the reason I do that is just to help me know where, where the code might be having a hang up. So it's good to be throwing a lot of console logs in there. You can either clean them up or leave them in there later on. Um, not a bad idea to probably comment them out and you're done. Okay. So then I finally run my context.render. So my context.render is going to say, hey, put this thing on the screen of the browser. So now what I did do is I renamed, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but just to show you what I did, um, instead of index.html, I made it .njk. So I did change where I defined my views. So before, if you go here, where we defined our views middleware, okay, and the reason I did this is in the middle of trying to figure something that wasn't working quite the way I expected it, but it turns out it wasn't this, but I had already changed it, so I left it. So again, when we did this, we, we originally put HTML here, which means to look for files with .html and use nunjux. So I just changed it to NJK, which is the native um, nunjux file type. So it's gonna say, look for files that end in .njk and then use nunjux to render them. So I changed the name of my index to index.njk. But, but if you have yours as index.html, it'll still work fine. Um, you don't need to change that, but just so you understand where my code is relative to the last video. Okay. So context.render, I'm rendering the, my index.njk file. And then I'm going to send over a variable. We're going to call the variable posts. Now, where's this variable coming from? Results. Now, where is was results? Up here. Okay, so really the results are the results that I get back. And you could name this results here anything you want. But error, comma, results is kind of descriptive of what we're getting. So I, I leave it like that. Um, so post, this post variable that I'm sending over to my index.njk for rendering is from my results. So what it's going to do is going to send an array of all those documents. Okay. So basically now we have two documents because we made two posts manually back in the very beginning of this video um, in there. So it's going to send an array with both those posts over to my index.njk. And you have to kind of, and the reason why I'm pointing out that it's an array is you have to know that because that means that first post is technically going to be zero. So here in my index.njk, I'm just going to really simply post it onto the screen. So, so here's my token or variable placement post index zero dot title. Okay, post zero dot body, save. Okay, so let me just make sure everything is saved. Saved. And the cool thing you can do is that technically if you're using Visual Studio Code, you could open up your terminal from um, from here, you can just go to terminal, new terminal, instead of having a separate window, and you can just go here and then select your, go to select default shell, and you can see the different types of shell programs you have on your computer. So right now, I'm using the git bash shell here in Visual Studio. So in that case, I'm gonna just do node index.js. Run, waiting for my, there we go. So see, I know I'm listing on port 1985. I know it's connected to Mongo. This is why those console logs are so important. It just lets you see information so you know what your program is doing outside of what's going on in the browser window. So let me refresh this, even though it's gonna say the same thing. Cool, and then I see test post and the body of test post, the first one. Now if I want to change that to the second post, let's go back to our code. Go back to index.njk and change this to index one because the first spot is always zero, so the second spot's one. 
I'm going to save that. Okay, now if you're using Windows, you might be having a problem with Notamon. Um, so when I run Notamon, for some reason, it doesn't work in my, on, my, on my Windows PC the same way it does run on my Linux machine. So I'm not worrying about that right now. So I'm going to cancel out Control C, cancel out the server. And notice you see here, it did console log the full array. Because again, I said console log results, which is the full array. And here you can see the first, the first post and the second post. So that's so you can see what results looks like. Another benefit of doing console logs, you can see what the data looks like, so that way you know how to work with it. Okay, so I can console log it, what what the search is returning to me into the console log, and I can see, oh, it's an array with two objects. So I need to call the right index and then call the right item. That's useful. Cool. So let's reopen the index.html. I mean, no, not no, right, right. node index.js wait for it to start back up and there's there we go so right now it's still showing test post number one i'm going to refresh and it should change to the second test post and there we go see body of test post number two okay it didn't change the title so that must mean i must have forgot to change something in the code code title one or unless the title was just test post might have been Let's go back to my data, just make sure that this is, oh, yep, they were both, they both have the same title test post, so that all worked out fine. Okay, cool. But what if I wanted to show both of them? Well, here's how you can do it. Using Nunjux, you can do, um, you can iterate. So basically, let's keep that out of the way for a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a loop, so that way it does each. So we're going to say for... the do percentage so that way we encapsulate whenever you're doing like more code in here so that's i would do it in that and i would say like for we'll say post in posts so it's going to take that post array and say hey this post array has many different items in it we're going to do this code several times for each item in there and the current item is going to be called post okay so i can actually just take this off now post because now it's going to loop through each one, and each time it loops, it's just called post now. Now i got to end the loop. So i got to make the end of the loop. And we're going to do this end for loop. And there you go. So what it's going to do now, it's going to go to index 0, take that post, and that's going to become post, post the title, post the body. Then it's going to do it again for the second item, post title, post body. So let's save that. Let's make sure it works. So let's actually, what? Oh. We need to turn off the server, control C, and then turn the server back on. Connection made. Yes. Cool. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's refresh this, and now we should see both posts. And there we go. Now, I didn't put a break. should put another break after the body, so that way it breaks up a little bit better. So you see here, the body of post number one is on the same line as the title of post number two, but it did go reiterate. And I can make it, you know, I can go make it fancy. I can go do something like this. I could be like, each time it shows up in a div. Okay, so each one will show up in a div, and each div will have a each div will have a class for CSS called block, or we'll call it post. Okay, not to get too confusing with using the same word over and over again, but this is my class versus this being sort of my iteration variable. Okay, so let's save that. Now, let me just make sure that what's, where's my CSS file. So let me go to my head. So then is style.css. Let's just make sure this is the right style.css. This is, yeah, this is the right one. So now we can describe that post class. So we can say width 80%. Okay. Background color. Use the same thing as above, 
So number zero zero one F three F is navy color. Okay. Now the color of the text will be white. Uh, uh, uh. Yep, that looks fine right now. Background color. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, it's CSS. I got to separate each thing with a semicolon. There we go. And that looks better. Okay, that's the beauty of using a, a an editor like Visual Code or Sublime or Atom, that it'll color code your, your stuff once it recognizes the file type, which makes life a lot easier. And there's always plugins you can install for more file types. So there's like plugins for the, non, the NJK file type. So that way when I'm doing Nunjux, it, rec it color codes things for me. It just makes it easier to pick up when there's an error when it's not coloring things right. Um, this can also be referred to as like linting, although linting implies a little more, but it's the same idea. The idea is that it just gives you a way to kind of visualize mistakes before they become a problem. So with 80% background color, color white, and we want to center this div. So we're going to say margin. We want them kind of separated from each other. So we'll say 30 pixels um, vertically and then auto horizontally so that way it's centered um and what else why what do i want to do we'll add some padding so it's not like stuck up against the edge so we'll do 20 picks and we'll leave it at that save okay now let's restart our server control c index.a.js okay let's refresh And there we go. So it's the same data, but now it's reiterating. So now you're trying to see how this blog is going to work out. We have all these posts that are stored in our database. We're just sending them to the template, and the template then just renders it, which is cool. Problem is, you know, that's kind of, I mean, here technically you already can have a blog page, but the problem is every time you want to make a blog post, you're going to have to go over to your Mongo DB and then create a create a, a post. And that may not necessarily be the way you want to make blog posts. In your blog but theoretically you could do that at this point at this point you have a functioning blog um you know it displays the information and you can pretty it up however you want but wouldn't it be nice if there was an actual page where you can actually put in the data put in your blog post put it into the database so that way you can just work all from this website um that would be great wouldn't it so what we're going to do over the next several uh videos is we're going to actually create all those other things so that way you can one create new blog posts two delete blog posts, and three, edit your blog posts. Also known as CRUD, create, read, update, delete. So right now we can read. So it reads the data, info from the database, renders it onto the template. So technically your application is now working from the user end. They can read the posts, but now you want to add that, that sort of admin, update, edit, delete functionality. So that way you can create your blog posts and edit it from there. And it's looking pretty decent, okay? And I haven't done that much styling. This is some very basic styling and it's, it's looking pretty cool so we're going to go from there and again i'm using the materialized css library so i was able to do it fairly quick using like a bootstrap or a skeleton any of these kind of css libraries um which are you know always nice especially when you're doing tutorials like this and you only have so much time to be spending on styling cool so with that i will see you guys in the next video have a great day and enjoy